Bank Negara announced today that as at September, it has used less than 10% of its 1 billion ringgit fund for affordable homes that was launched in January. BNM Director of Financial Surveillance, Keza Iskandar Anwarudin, says that this 10% has been used to partially subsidise the purchase of 1,100 homes. The collective loan approved for these 1,100 homes amounted to 180 million ringgit. Keza points out that high housing prices remain a major hurdle for home ownership. He explains that the maximum affordable house price nationwide is 282000 based on median household income. However, data from the National Property Information Centre shows that the average price of new properties is 417262 ringgit, which prices many Malaysians out of owning a home. Kaiser says that houses in Malaysia are considered seriously unaffordable by international standards. Meanwhile, Kaiser says that housing loans remain a key driver of credit growth as the bank banking system continues to firmly support home ownership. Although the perception is that banks are rejecting the bulk of housing loan applications, Kaiser says its data shows that for the first eight months of 2019, newly approved housing loans amounted to 113 billion ringgit, benefiting 260,000 borrowers, higher than the average 248,000 borrowers in the first eight months of 2016 to 2018. Ex-1MDB CEO Dato Sharul Azrael Ibrahim Helmi testified today that he truly believed what XPM Dato Sri Najib Razak was doing with the fund was in the best interests of the country. This follows what the former Premier had said in a meeting that he does not want to destroy the country. Under cross-examination by Lead Defence Counsel Tan Sri Muhammad Shafi Abdullah, Sharul said that he believed Najib's words, which underpinned all the decisions he made while at 1MDB. He explained this is why why he had bulldozed through the deal with Petro Saudi International. Sharo also admitted that he knew that fugitive Low Tech Joe was concurrently advising PSI and the board of 1MDB even before the JV had been carried out. Sharo also testified that while the board knew of Low's dual role, it was not recorded in any meeting minutes, as he had been instructed to minimize Low's influence in the running of 1MDB. Malaysia Marine and Heavy Engineering saw its losses narrow to 4.66 million for the third quarter of FY19 from 22.72 million ringgit a year earlier, helped by its marine segment. As compared with a loss of 16 million in the third quarter of FY18, MHB's Marine Division posted an operating profit of 2.5 million ringgit during the quarter. However, its Heavy Engineering Division posted a higher operating loss of 6.8 million due to lower segment revenue. As such, overall, Overall revenue fell 12% to 254.35 million ringgit for the quarter, compared with 289.8 million previously. Despite the improvement in its performance, MHB remains cautious, saying that the short-term outlook remains uncertain amid geopolitical tensions, slowing global economic growth, sluggish oil demand, and the ongoing US-China trade war. MHB added that improving profitability remains the group's priority by continuously exercising cost optimization efforts and ensuring quality and timely delivery of projects. Air Asia, Air Asia X and their respective CEOs, Riyad Asmat and Benjamin Ismail, will remain as defendants in a defamation suit filed by Malaysia Airports Holdings and Malaysia Airports Sepang. High Court Judge Datuk Mohamad Firuz Jafril today ruled to not strike out the two CEOs in the legal action. According to reports, Firuz ruled this is not a plain and obvious case to allow the defendants' names to be struck from the defamation suit. MAHB and MASSB are alleging that several Air Asia state Statements that appeared between December 2018 and February 2019 implied that it was the airport operators that had increased the passenger service charge from 50 ringgit to 73. MHB and MASSB said that in fact it was regulator Mavcom that had increased the PSE. MHB claimed that AirAsia statements implied that the plaintiffs are greedy and of questionable ethics. The hearing of the suit is fixed for April 20th to 23rd, 2020, and the court has ordered Riyadh and Benyamin to pay costs of 10,000 ringgit. 
MSM Malaysia Holdings is expecting a better year ahead on the back of a global sugar deficit. CEO Datuk Khairil Anwar Aziz said in a statement that given that the global sugar market is expected to swing into deficit, this provides MSM a greater opportunity to expand its export market. The International Sugar Organization recently forecast a global sugar deficit of 3.5 million tonnes in 2019 to 2020, growing to nearly 6 million tonnes between 2020 and 2021. This is mainly due to low lower production in major sugar-producing countries such as Brazil, Thailand and Europe. That aside, Cairo says that the group will continue to reinforce its growth for exports and uplift its utilisation rate, backed by its new Johor refinery. Cairo adds that with the new refinery, MSM is in position to expand its global presence and diversify its revenue streams.